My name is Ed Wasilius. I'm uh, from London, Ontario, a retired trucker. And, and you want to talk to me about highball. I sure do. Yeah, I just, it came up in conversation yesterday and this morning I was told Ed is here. I'm like, yeah. oh, who is Ed? You need to come meet him right now. So yeah. here we are sitting yeah. with Ed. Yeah, I, I've been at pretty well every show here, the retro show. And I, I, I think I only, my wife and I only missed two or three of them where we were away somewhere. But other than that, I've been here. This is my fourth time here too. Is it? Yeah, yeah it's a great show. Okay, that it is, and it, it's, it, I think it's one of the best shows going, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I like the fact that they don't have, it's not the competition here, it's just show your stuff off and enjoy the camaraderie, which is nice. I just, yeah, I treat it as just a nice way to catch up with friends, this That's show That's exactly here. what it is, you know, people that I haven't seen for years, mm -hmm. and, uh, and as for me, you know, I, I'm finding every year there's fewer and fewer of my friends here, which is kind of sad. Uh, my own wife just passed away too, so she's not here anymore. Very and uh, kind of sad, but it, it is. Hey, that's the way it goes. I started driving in 1964 when I first started driving. I came up fresh off the farm. <laughs> <laughs> I went to trucking, and uh, I, I, I I worked for all oh, all kinds of employers over the years. I I usually I would only stay a year, two years, three years. You know, I made it four years. That was a long time for me back then. <laughs> so when did your big break come? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 well, on the highballing? Yeah, how uh, did this all start? Well, I, I, Peter Carter and I were friends, had been friends for some time, and he used to go trucking with me once in a while, and uh, and he went with me to Vancouver a couple of times, and East Coast, I was running long distance then already, and uh, he, he just wanted to get a feel of what trucking was like. And uh, he'd spend a lot of time with me, and, and I think there was another guy he went with too a little bit. Anyway, that was all good and well, and, and uh, then I didn't see him for a while, and one day I got a call, and it was Peter. He says, you, you want to work on a movie? And, and I knew he was going to do a movie, and he says, you want to come work on it? And I said, sure. Jumped at the chance. It's got to be the 70s at this point, it right? It was uh, 1978, I believe. I, you might correct me, but I think it was 78. And, uh, but anyways, he... Uh, I had a driver in my truck, and uh, I was running West Coast with it at the time. But anyways, I, I went to work on this movie. It did about four months. Uh, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, 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 I got to admit, it, it, was, it was fun to do for four months, and, and I, I made good money, which, which helped. And you uh, get to call yourself a stunt driver. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's people that call me that without that. <laughs> uh, but anyways... I, I used to be pretty rough years ago, but anyway, that's all right. That's history. We got to do these shots, you know, and, and uh, a lot of the moving was moving equipment around. We, we had two identical Kenworth K100s. Most of the vehicles there, there was two of them. They used one of the trucks for the drive-bys, they call it. You just drive up and down the road, and they move the cameras around, and you drive up and down the same road again, and they move the cameras around, and you go the same road again. <laughs> and, and when you look at the video, it, it looks like it's a different road, but it, it's the same road going a different direction, a different angle. But, but it's fine, you know. It, it was it was lots of fun, and uh, we I had to do the car chase, and, and it was really I enjoyed that. But it, but it was a challenge. They they wanted me to do a, a, a literally a ninety degree turn at sixty miles an hour. Well, I had never done that before, not intentionally anyway. And uh, I practiced and I practiced till I got it down. I knew exactly how to do that. Swing the trailer around so I wouldn't flip it over. And away we and and at that it was were snow banks in the road at that time. And, and they would move the cameras around every time I practiced. And one time I turned to out the cameraman. <laughs> he was he was laying there behind his camera. Uh, after I made the right turn, he was on the right side. And 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 the, and the truck started jackknifing a bit. And uh, he, he his eyes got as big as saucers. And I was coming right for him. <laughs> you should have seen him scramble. I, I laughed at that for days, but I did miss him. <laughs> Probably made for a pretty dramatic we shot. Had a shot where for we him, the cars all off. <laughs> Peter Fonda well, was the cameras cars off. And supposedly a character Jerry Reed was doing the driving, but it was me. And uh, I had uh, they made me put on these uh, dark glasses and 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 the hat that Jerry had on, and and the windows in the truck. They put this film on it you know it's a, but it was it was me doing the driving so can you sort of tell it's you in the shots no 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 okay. the only shot you can tell it's me is is, is uh, like I said I was in a bar shot one time and just sitting as a patron just they just needed bodies to fill up the bar and then we just sat there 
that's all. That's the only I I have seen the shot. I can see myself in it, but it's, it's like I said, it's about three seconds. It, it was a lot of fun. Like oh, and uh, would I do it again? Well, not at my age, obviously. But if I was young, I, I would do it again. Where all was it filmed? It was filmed in, in uh, all within give or take fifty miles of Toronto. Uh, it was done in Toronto, down in the docks. Uh, the restaurant scenes were done on a restaurant in Spadina Avenue in Blo near Bloor. Uh, the motel scene was done in Oakville. Some of the drive-bys were done in Oakville. There were shots done in Kleinberg. The opening shot, there was Concord leasing truck at that time, Al Wartsman, which is now uh, Armac now. Uh, it, it was done in Kleinberg. I did that opening shot with the cab over Freightliner. Uh, the driveway shot, the house shots were done in Kleinberg. Uh, the, the underpass, under, when they go underneath the railroad, and let the air out of the tires. It was done on Highway 27 around Kleinberg also. Uh, there was lots of shots in Milton. In the fifth wheel in, in Milton, there was outside shots, but not inside the restaurant in Milton. That was done in Toronto. Uh, up in the north of Milton, on, on, on the sixth line is where they, they did the shooting scene. Uh, it was done there. And there was lots of drive-bys around uh, around that area too to get the footage that they wanted to get it right. We didn't go too far, like all within 50 miles, you know. And in the winter months. In, yeah, in the winter it was winter time, fall, fall, like early winter. Matter of fact, that was a real issue for them for continuity, because you know it, they were working one day, and if you get a snowstorm or some snow at night, the, the background changes. Uh huh. I, I know there was a young lady doing the continuity. I know they they would mix the shots up. But the backgrounds are different because of the weather. Oh man! You know, I suppose when you're in California, the weather stays the same every day, but not in Canada. And this lady too, you know, I, she had to make sure I wore the same clothes every day, you know, and uh, and and the actors too, you know, and she, and she all the details that that gal did. Wow, it, it's a whole different world. That and it's not something I'd like to do, but it, it was for me. It was it was a, a riot for four months. I had a grand old time. I, I made more money in four months than I probably usually made in a year or so because it paid well. Uh, yeah, I had little kids at the time, so the money was nice, but it, it was also lots of fun. And uh, and uh, Peter Carter, sadly, he passed away not long after the movie. The, the movie never turned out to be a, a big, big hit. You know, and a lot of people, especially truckers, still remember it, still watch it. I have a copy of it at home. I like it. Yeah, I, I, I like good. it too. I, uh, what was Jerry Reed like? Jerry Reed was actually a really nice down-to-earth guy and and he could actually drive the truck like he, he, he when he was younger apparently he drove a truck for a while for a living but they wouldn't let him because of insurance liability uh -huh. but but he he could drive it like he just wasn't allowed and uh, so I all the driving that Jerry did I did and uh, it was all done by me and uh, I know he moved the truck a few times and they get all excited Jerry, you can't do that liability Lord have mercy <laughs> he knew how to drive it and, uh, but he was just a nice guy. Him and I act out all the time. The lady actor, Helen Shaver, she was she was a pickup, and she was from St. Thomas, Ontario. Very nice lady. I think this was one of her earlier first jobs. Mm -hmm. She's done a lot since then. She was a nice gal. She was real friendly too. At nighttime, afterwards, we would go to the theater and we'd watch all the outtakes they call it, all the ones that were done that day. And they would edit that. That's no good. That was no good. That one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a keeper. That's a you know. That's what the we actors did. would sit there and watch. Well, them too? most most of the staff was there. Some cool. of the actors were there too. Not all the time, you know. Most of the editors did it, you know. But I I had gone to it a couple of times too, just just to see what's going on, and it's interesting to watch. They would they have hours and hours and hours of footage, you know, and I think these guys sat there all night. I didn't. They go over these shots and uh, and like I say, you you would I would spend a half a day or a day doing a certain shot and then when a the movie came out it went for about 12 seconds oh my goodness I look at that like man I spent all day doing that <laughs> not disappointing that's just movie business that's the way it goes I guess but uh, yeah I, I I don't regret doing that but it's been uh, 44 years and you went back to driving after that I spent 47 years driving before I retired I, I, I've been retired now for be, uh, 10, 11 years, 10 years, I guess, in August. I don't regret retiring. I, I, I've never drove again. Uh, I, I drove school bus for about seven years part-time just for something to do because I like kids. 
but I don't do that anymore either. I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm completely retired now. You never took a corner at 60 miles an hour, 90 degree angle on the school not, bus, not right? No. <laughs> uh, over the years, I've had a few moments in the truck too. That holy jumpers! I don't know how I did it. I did a, I did a 180 one time out in Newfoundland, slid down the hill backwards, and the trailer went into the snowbank, and the whole thing did a 180. Never hit anything. Never damaged anything. Put the truck back in gear the way I went. <laughs> oh, the, sometimes, you know, a lot of time it's it's not good man and not good management, good luck. You know, and there, I had lots of those moments. And sometimes it didn't always work either. I had a few crashes in my life, not not nothing real serious, and none were ever my fault. But it doesn't matter. You still get crap. And uh, I was involved in a couple of fatalities, which is really not nice to remember. But uh, but hey. Can you do it? It comes with the territory when you. I, I, when you drive for that many years. Yeah. Well, I, I, 47 years, and I, and I, I added up the trucks over it and all the stuff I had at home. I figure, well over five million miles I've driven. So that's. Uh, Did you have a favorite truck, in your career? Yeah, I had a. I think one of the the, the last truck I had was a really really nice truck. I really really enjoyed it, and and. Uh, I, I sold it because somebody offered me more money than I thought it was worth and I sold it and I walked away because I wanted it done and gone. But I think one of my favorite trucks I had, I had an 87 Freightliner with a triple four Cummins in it. It was a really, really nice truck and uh, I put 1.4 million on it and uh, I sold it, traded it. And, you know, sometimes it just Sometimes as I look back, when I look at some of these guys, how long they keep their trucks and how well they keep them, I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should have kept that one, you know, because it was a good truck. So now uh, you just come to look at the old ones? Yeah, look at I, the I like looking at the old ones and look, look, look at the fancy ones. There's some fancy iron here. My mm -hmm. goodness, there's some fancy iron. I took a bunch of pictures. There's got to be over 300 trucks here right now, I think. It sure I, looks uh, like I, it. I know there's over 300. I, I'm thinking more four. I, I know they've had over four before, but then the trucks are all the way on the back and mm -hmm. everything too. The camaraderie here is fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many guys that know each other, and it's it is so satisfying to see these guys uh, getting together, chewing the fat together like they used to. You know, and mm -hmm. exchange stories. And there's a lot of nice iron here. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I've noticed, a lot of the guys, well, myself for one can't stand the new trucks you know you got the electronics and you got the electronic logs and, and you got the speed limiters and uh, it's one of the reasons I get out of it too I just got tired of that like you know just uh, but but uh, some of the guys I noticed that they've taken their old trucks and and they're still earning their keep and that's really good to see you know you get some of these old girls and they're still working and there are some young guys here who have bought old trucks to I run know. too so. yeah I like to see that so do you still have trucks? No, 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 no. I'm completely out of it. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't have any trailers left, no trucks left, nothing. I, I, Just come and look at them. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, matter of fact, I used to own some rental properties, four of them. I sold all that. And, uh, and, and I just recently sold my house. I had a motor home. I, I just sold that about three months ago and I bought this. And uh, downsizing, I'm by myself. So I, I, bought, I bought a nice pickup truck. So. I, I treat myself a little bit, <laughs> but uh, and I'm traveling. My my brother and I just we just spent about three weeks down the east coast. Uh, we're going to go west uh, in a, two or three weeks. Him and I are going to go west. It's all the way to Vancouver. I have a brother in Abbotsford. He turns 80 this year. We're going we're going to go for his birthday. But uh, uh, that's about all I do. I, I, that's still some adventures, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that'll be quite yeah. an adventure. Two old farts. <laughs> He, he's almost as old as I am, and uh, and you know there's only the three or three of us left out of seven. Sounds like you could be making another movie here with three old single guys on a road trip across Canada. <laughs> my son is the pride of my life. He he is a mechanic for international trucks, and and for, for the fourth consecutive year now he, he is the top mechanic for international trucks for North America. Wow. Which, yeah, he is. I'm really proud of him. He's got a great big award and stuff and. I'm really, really, really proud of him, and uh, uh, but I'm and I'm also glad that he, he never went on the road. I would, I would, I would never recommend it. I, you know, just, that's the one big regret I have. I spent a lot of time away from my family. You know, the, I, I have five kids. 
never really got to watch them grow up. You know, and, and I'd be home for get home Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, and Sunday night I'd be gone again. I, I spent a lot of the years doing that, and I'm not sure if I'd recommend that or not. So, but uh, it, it, it when I started back in the '60s. We did long distance trucking too, but most of us were home on the weekend. Like, you know, it, it, uh, uh, we would run to New Brunswick or something, and on the weekend we'd be home again, and we wouldn't leave again until Sunday night, 10 o'clock. Matter of fact, you weren't even allowed to drive on Sundays back then. A lot of guys don't remember that anymore. But uh, we, I got stopped in Quebec one time only, never got a fine. For driving on a Sunday? For driving on a Sunday, yeah. I, 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 oh, that was, oh, back, be back in the 60s. I, I never got a fine, but I did get, get stopped. And I think the saving grace was I had the reefer on, so it was, you know, you're perishable, you were allowed uh -huh. to haul. You know, I don't know if you need the reefer on for a load of furniture or not, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's what we used to do. But normally I, I, I seek out the old roads I used to drive and the old haunts, and I could find where the old truck stops used to be. Some are still there. Most are not operational anymore. Some of them are completely gone or run down or grass, they've leveled them, I know a few of them. When I go down the old roads, I, I, especially with my brother now, oh, there used to be a good truck stop here. Man, it's gone, or the building's all gone to hell, you know, and kind of ashamed to see that. And, and I blame a lot of that on, on, the, on, the, on the, the big, like in New Brunswick, for instance, and quite a few years ago now, they, they put the big highway through New Brunswick. And, and I tell people, they absolutely totally ruined the province. And because it used to be along the river, it used to be so pictorial, like, you know, beautiful, like every mile there's a different picture. And it, and it'd be motels and little restaurants and little mom and pop stores and, and, and a tire shop. They're all gone. Because now people gas up and have something to eat at, at the Quebec border at the Irving, and the next stop is the Irving at the Nova Scotia border. It's gone. Like, you know, and, uh, People rush through. There's, there, it's just coincidental. There happens to be another Irving big stop halfway through. So people stop, bing, bing, and they're through New Brunswick. They don't see anything. They don't see the motels. They don't see the stores. They don't see the truck stops, the restaurants. They're all closed up. You know, and, and that's a shame. And I, it, it's lots of fun. I, I, I had a good career. I, I, I had about 47 years in trucking. Not all of it driving. I, I spent a few years as a, as a safety supervisor. I spent a, a few years as a driver trainer. Uh, I spent a few years as a multiple truck owner operator, which I would not recommend again. I, I made I made more money and had a better life when I had one truck driving it myself. So it's time to move on. Well, I'm glad you came here today, yeah. and but uh, someone fought to introduce me to you. So yeah. thank you so much for sharing your story. Well, no, thank you for talking to me. I appreciate it. I, uh, yeah, it's it's great to say, reminisce and bring back memories. So. A lot, a lot of good memories, and uh, yeah, some not so good either. But hey, they're all, they're all part of living. You know, and it, you can't do anything about some of the stuff that wasn't right or didn't go right. But it is what it is. You, you move on and make the best of today. I'm glad I'm here. It's one, it looks like it's going to be a really nice day.